Welcome to another broadcast of The Soul of the Everyman on the Artist First Radio Network. All past shows are archived. You can find them at artistfirst.com. And now, here they are, the calmest people on the network, Michael and Margaret Lyons. <laughs> it, it's, it's the trip rate. Thank you very much, Scott. And yes, you, this is Margaret and Michael Lyons, and I'm not Margaret. <laughs> <laughs> but I am. <laughs> and welcome to The Soul of the Everyman Show. And... Um, welcome again, yes, as, as, uh, as uh, Scott said, to an oasis of peace. Right. Because right at this time of year, we really need it. And, and our show tonight is about, sort of about this time of year, about the fact that we all get stressed. Mm. And that you can detect it in every, every second of the, of the time you spend on the road, in the mall, in stores. Everybody is just right at the edge. They're right on the edge of snapping and just killing everybody for a hundred yard, <laughs> hundred yard radius. Oh my! That <laughs> is true. True. I mean, it's Black Friday, Brown Friday, Green Wednesday. You know, Purple Tuesday. It's just they want to just da, 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 da. They, the, the the media and the Madison Avenue really, and um, every Hallmark, you know greeting card video silly thing they're all trying to just just get you just so ramped up well it's just it, it's more difficult now because in general the media has been sort of ramping up people's emotions any way they can all right just and everyone that i know of has just been sort of turning off in general news because they're feeling the manipulation, you know, they're, they're getting triggered and they don't need that stress. And then this is your seasonal stress <laughs> because <laughs> you have got to do Thanksgiving and Christmas. And, and, and that's exactly right, Margaret. You, you said it in the right words. You've got to do it. Mm-hmm. It's like a prison sentence. <laughs> 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 you, you just can't. You can't opt out, or suddenly, oh, it's all you know. It's, and suddenly, I'm the bad guy because you know you don't want to you don't want to meet every you don't want to see Uncle Fred at, at, at the Thanksgiving dinner table, and, and it's not it's not Uncle Fred's fault. But it, it it really comes down to that we're all, you know, um, you know, bloody Christmas starts like the day after Halloween. You know, yeah. they're, they're emptying out the pumpkins and tossing in the Christmas trees in the Walmart suit, in, suit you know, the Walmart Walmart aisles, uh, and you're like, what? You know, and, and rocking around the Christmas tree is playing in like every corner of the of the mall, and you're just like, I can't, It's way too darn early. Well, it's too much because too much. Your your head is like, okay, I'm trying to get candy for Halloween, <laughs> and you're trying to, you know dealing with the kids, the grandkids, and the visitors, and whatnot. And then suddenly, you know, it's like this... As you're reaching for the bag of M&Ms, it suddenly becomes candy canes. Like, like you blink your eyes and like, bink, wah! <laughs> and now, well, it's just, it's, it's hovering over your head like a dark <laughs> cloud. Or, or a dark Christmas cloud, you know? <laughs> you just... <laughs> the Christmas balls and the tinsel are, are hovering over your head. And you're just like, I can only concentrate on one thing at a time. I don't know about the rest of you guys, okay? Because Christmas means, you know, your Christmas list mm. and getting all that prepped in some direction. And that takes a lot of effort to organize. But all you're trying to do is, you know, make some kids really happy because they get some candy or something, some toy or something. You know, so you got all that going on, and then it just begins to build. The pressure builds slowly in this bottle of your attention. Slowly, I turned, <laughs> and then you know you, you you wind up getting through Halloween into Thanksgiving. You know, you're looking at Thanksgiving, and you hadn't even considered Thanksgiving because you had. Christmas down the pike. It's, it's like a whistle stop in between Halloween and, and, and you know and and Santa Santana Satan coming through. It's just like <laughs> you know, it's just it's just 
Yeah, you know, Thanksgiving, all that is is like like the like the starting bell of the of round one of of the of the death match that is Christmas. You know? oh, yeah. No, that was like the Black Friday specials where people are are slugging other people and you're just like wow. or popping a cap in someone's derriere. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and 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 and, and crazy. And it's crazy, and 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 you, to abstract, to sit yourself back for just a second, abstract. Um, it, it, it is driven by the, um, you know, the calendar now has been turned on its head, and everything is driven by the sort of the economics of the thing. You know, uh, the folks who are who are now pounding on our heads trying to get us to buy the latest, you know, squeezed out pile of goo, uh, plastic nonsense. Is because six or seven months ago they were ordering up, you know, um, shiploads, container shiploads of the same stupid plastic junk that was on a slow boat from from the Far East, so that it would be here and Anytime. and trucked in and and set up in these giant, you know, ominous uh, looming mounds of, of toys, <laughs> uh, you know, for this exact moment. So, you know. They're all locked into it too. These poor folks have to think about Christmas in July. Right. That's why you have Christmas in July. It's why you have Christmas in July to get rid of the other crap they couldn't sell last Christmas. <laughs> you know, it's just it it, it it it's it it's a lovely, beautiful celebration which has been turned. Um, you know, this 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 becomes a gauntlet, which well, yeah, which is. The starting bell is is as soon as everyone's digested the turkey. It's even before that, it seems. Well, yeah. it's just that, the, as you said, it Thanksgiving seems to be a a through stop yeah. instead of it being a celebration. You know, most of us, you think of Thanksgiving and you're like, okay, I got to prep, I have to cook, yeah. I got to get all my stuff, and and the supermarkets are the ones that have, you know, how how far in advance do they have to order frozen turkey? Oh, to give know. away after you do your four hundred dollars for, for the great turkey massacre. Mm-hmm. <laughs> They're already dead. They're frozen. Okay. I, well, no, the one that started in like you know September, or whatever. Oh, yeah. You know, line them up, start killing the turkeys. Uh, but 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 you know that Thanksgiving is we're all you know we're all distracted because we have to sit down with our relatives that we all hate or love. Um, but the <laughs> uh, and and talk to them about you know all the banal things that they want to talk to us. About and 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 we, and we had a lovely Thanksgiving. We had a big, it was a big celebration. We had a, we had a great time, uh, but you know that's not true of of everyone. And many many wow. people are sort of are sort of they they see Thanksgiving exactly as you just said it. It's like you have to put on you know it's like put on my game face, man. I got to put my armor on. I got to get ready because yeah. ten ten seconds after that last. Uh, gnawed drumstick hits the hits the garbage disposal. I've got to I've got to start. Got to run out and you hit know, the I gotta, black. I got it. They're starting Black Friday on Thursday at six. Which is basically you put on your Rambo. You know, like you're putting like, <laughs> like, like you tie the bandana, you put the grease on, you load up your AK, and you head for the mall. You know, <laughs> or whatever store is having the, the crazy Black Friday sales. Exactly. But, but that is exactly what a number of people do. And then you know, some people have the tradition of we got to get the Christmas tree the next day. Right. Because we got to make Christmas last as long as possible. I, I was literally, and I was on the road um, a couple of days ago, and almost pushed off the road <laughs> by by a by a oh. truckload of Christmas trees. You know that was making a left hand turn, and it's, and and yeah, uh, yes, you're going to see Christmas trees, and 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 um, and they do have to set them up and truck them in for wherever they truck them in for, but the. Um, the Great tr- Christmas Tree Massacre. The Great Christmas Tree Massacre, which which closely follows follows the Great Turkey Massacre, and and, and that preceded preceded, of course, by the Great Pumpkin Massacre. Uh, right. So so we we you know we have just you know we're just just <laughs> this wave upon wave wave upon wave of, of dead of bodies mayhem. Yes. of mayhem. Oh, you know, dear. nothing like the holidays for waves upon <laughs> waves wonder, upon waves of dead bodies. Um, we wonder why we're stressed. No, yeah, and that's exactly it. And coming back to our theme, all this is happening, and and it's it, it really is. It seems that September comes, the kids go back to school. 
a month goes by and it's Armageddon. And it's, it's, it is relentless until, until New Year's. And, and that's the other thing. You know, Christmas comes after all this, after all the, you know, the, the gunfire and, and the, you know, the, the giant movements of troops and the dead bodies. And Christmas is over, and all of a sudden it's New Year's, and it's a race to that. You know, you can't, it's, you know, <laughs> you, you got, well, but it's not, you know, you have, to, you have to literally turn around, Unwrap those gifts, stuff that stuff, and they just throw the tree out the door and get your your party hat on because now it's New Year's, and so there you are staring at yourself, January eighth, going, "What just happened? I was just mugged by Christmas," and it happens every freaking year. <laughs> so 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 you know we should have started in July, and I, I think if you go back and listen to some of our archives, you can start to think, you know, you start to armor yourself up with the armor of peace, with the armor of of um, uh, you know, of of anti-stress, of I'm going to enjoy myself despite all you people who are trying to make me run to the mall, put on my AK-47 and massacre some Christmas trees. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> you can choose. <laughs> you can choose. You can state. choose. You can choose the state of your heart. And it's again, I mean, we've been around this dryer drum how many years? I mean, you realize that there, there is this round of stress that's about to happen. And every year, I have to say, it is different, different circumstances. But it is the same gauntlet that you've got to run. So you consciously have to choose the state that you're going to be in before you enter the fray. Yeah. In other words, like for Thanksgiving, you're never quite sure what the rest of the family's mood is going to be. Everybody you have, especially a large group, you never know what's going to happen. So before you go in, you just say, okay, I'm just happy to be here. I am in a happy state of mind. I brought uh, bacon turkey, and everybody loves that, so we're going to share something that everybody's going to enjoy and no matter what happens i'm just going to be there right you you put on your um you 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 pre uh dispose yourself to a to a serene uh frame of mind you say no you you, you and you know you know you could, unexpectedly people could be in a good mood unexpectedly <laughs> but but you just go in there saying you know it's going to be, you know, the Thanksgiving from, you know, from, from, from Hag. And, and I'm just, I am going to be the oasis of peace. I am going to be the one who just sits here and says, that's, you know, that's just wonderful. You know, you know, uh, it, the, 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 all the things that are bothering you, I'm going to listen with an open, open ear and just give back what they're looking for and be, um, Decide actively decide to not engage in the drama or in the negativity or in, in any way amp that up. Well, your ex previous experiences, you know the personalities you're going to be dealing with. Yeah. So you almost have to sit there and go, well, I'm forgiving you before you open your mouth. Yes. Because I, kn I know what comes out of your lips. I've been around the dryer drum a few times. I've seen this happen again and again. I'm forgiving you already. Yes, and and I think that that's it's good advice not just for these types of of environments, or, you know, when you're already under a lot of stress, but in, in almost every situation, you have to go in, um, allowing people to be, to be human, to be not necessarily having a great day at the moment, to be having other stressors in their lives, uh, to and you're anticipating that they do say stupid things. Right, and, and and we all do, and and the, right. you know, you, you you go in with that that mode, and and you can survive these things much more, um, you know, much more, uh, you know, sort of calmly, or or without, uh, without taking away the negative, without taking away, um, the the stress. You know, you're there to have dinner with people you purport to love. And who purport to love you, and and it's it's really for the kids. You know, if there's always kids. These kids are always 
um, bright and open and, and they're there to have a good time. And if you put yourself in that mode, put yourself in the mode of just, I don't care. I'm here to have cake or I'm here to have, you know, uh, some turkey or, you know, whatever it is. Um, you, your heart is then therefore leading. Your heart is in the right place. Your energy is, is there. You're, you're not in the power center where you have to be right or they have to be <laughs> wrong, you know. Right. Uh, and you're not, you're not in, the, in the combative kind of, you know, oh, X, Y, Z always says this and I don't like that and this is my opinion and that's their opinion and da, 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 we're going to fight about this. You get away from all that. You just go up to the, you know, we're here to have cake and let's have some cake. And we, we, we're going to talk. And in essence, like you said, pre, pre-forgive all the things that could possibly happen before they happen. Right. Because, if, let's face it, you're an intelligent human being. And you can actually decide whether or not a, uh, an event is going to make you crazy or not. And you what? know certain things trigger you. So you, it's like, okay, I'm, I'm an adult here. And, I'm, and taking, that, I'm taking okay. responsibility for myself. So let me choose peace over strife. Right. And what are you doing there? You're, being, you're kind of pre-preparing yourself with an awareness of yourself mm-hmm. and, of, and of your environment. And the environment includes you know, the people who are there at the table or are there in the room. But it's mostly the awareness of self. You say, well, if I put myself in the right, um, in the right, sp- right state, right space, um, then I don't have to worry about what else happens because it all comes back into me and I am already prepared and in the state where I say, that's just great, you know. Uh, <laughs> or I, I'm just not going to um, allow my center to be knocked off or in any way um, disturbed by these environmental events because I'm, I'm already aware that that could happen and I'm already aware, therefore prepared. I'm balanced already. Mm-hmm. And you've, ta- you've made space for the madness that could, could ensue. All right, doesn't mean it always ensues, but you already know it could happen. Right. And, eh, because I'm, I know that my heart state is most important to me right now. And that's where I'm operating from. I'm going to be at peace, and I'm going to concentrate on, you know what? We're all here. Mm. We're all together. I'm glad to see you. I'm glad to see you, whether you are or not. No, Uh, no, I am (laughs) glad. I am glad to see you. I don't care what your reaction is. Right. And I'm glad to see you. And uh, one one feeling engenders the other. See what I mean? If, if, If you greet somebody with the openness of heart, See, I'm glad to see you, and you're, and 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 the pre- the preparation, the awareness allows you to be entirely sincere about that. You're just there, like a like a two year old saying, "Hi," yep. give you a hug, and then you get that immediately back. It's very much like we were talking about in, our, in one of our earlier shows about karma. You you get what you give. You know, if you're going to give the stressed attitude and the chip on your shoulder and the I'm going to bring drama to the table, well. You're going to get it back tenfold. Mm-hmm. But it's being in that state of, I'm, I'm glad to see you. Mm. And, and that communicates. Yeah. That, and that, if that's the only purpose that you come into these gatherings for, and I'm glad to see you, and just hold that, there's an amazing amount of peace that can flow. Even if, if madness starts ensuing somewhere. It doesn't matter because you. This is your fallback position. <laughs> exactly, and and you become um, much like the soul of the everyman is an oasis of peace, uh, where you can where where it's contagious. What you just said, mm-hmm. it's it's contagious. So you you can you can choose how you react, and and your choices echo outward to mm-hmm. those to the others in the room. Almost it doesn't force them to do it, but. It blunts anyone who's actively trying to create drama 
and those who don't want it anyway, but don't know how to, um, they don't know how to deal with it. You know, they almost like it's well. You know, I gotta react to the drama. You say, oh no, I can, re- I can, I can go this way because look, that one's doing it and it's working. So that you, you, you mm. build, you build a consensus of, of, of calm, and you can do that as part of your whole sort of holiday um, mantra. You know, he, well, go ahead. Um, I think you and I have discussed this before about how when you're driving on the highway. And you've already made your decision that you know there's crazies out there. Mm. But I'm going to have this bubble of of calmness all around me and all around my car. And this sort of sanity cloud that you're driving in. <laughs> and what you find is that you get all these people around you, other cars, that pretty much say, you know, this is the way to do it. And right. you, form, you form this grouping as you're traveling along the highway and whenever there's a crazy that's going you know we're all just looking at the crazy going okay and they they find a way to go around usually you know uh passing in the left hand lane as opposed to the right because all the the calm people are trying to trying to abide in the law (laughs) but anyway that kind of bubble is what you can bring to a gathering. Mm. And I know speaking for myself, uh, we had tremendous amounts of people for Thanksgiving. Uh, and it's just a lot of activity, and you're all gathered into, you know, a small space for, for was it 30 people or so. Yeah. So uh, the activity level just starts ramping up, especially after you've eaten... And, and your body begins to energize a little bit. And I just remember, since you want to hold that peace, regardless of the madness, just sitting down, pretty much in the middle of the room, and just, I'm, I'm good. Hmm. You know, and you, you basically have decided, okay, calmness, yeah. It's crazy going on. It's just that same kind of calmness. And I, what I remember exactly what you said, there were a number of people who wound up walking and going, you have the right idea. And they wound up sitting next to you, mm-hmm. a number of them. And we're all just kind of chilling while the madness is going on. Right. And, and even the madness becomes... Um, it's not the, no longer the dominant force, just as, as, as with the example on the highway or in any kind of traffic. You know, traffic's a stressful situation. It sort of occurs on a daily basis. You can, be, you can uh, again, decide to be the calm, d- decide to show or pattern what you want to see. It, it, it's very much like manifestation. If you want to see madness, you, you, you give out madness. If you want to see calm, you have to give out calm if you want to see if you want to see purpose and and focus you have to give out those things purpose and focus so you prepare yourself by being aware of yourself being aware of what you want uh and then no amount of of holiday madness can get in it'll try i mean it will try <laughs> and, and true and one of the avenues that it gets in and this is part of the awareness part is is it it annoys you it becomes this sort of annoyance this niggling thing you know react to me react to me react to me react to me look how silly i am look how stupid i am uh and and it's a way to get oh that's so stupid and then you're you're knocked off and you're and you're reacting the awareness to not to not react but to be proactive to say I know you're going to do that. I know you're going to try and annoy me. I'm, I'm like, I'm ready to be annoyed. Go right ahead. Annoy me. Nothing annoys those who want to annoy you more than you <laughs> saying to, I'm here so that you can start annoying me. Begin. <laughs> They're like, meh, you're taking all the fun out of it. <laughs> you know? It's true. Well, the ones that want to annoy you almost do it. Uh, they want to do this like surprise attack to annoy yes. you. Yes, it's hysterically funny. And when you realize that you, you got their number, yes, they don't like having their number. They don't like you coming in prepared because 
they think that, that this is somehow, uh, like you say, a surprise, and they have they get the upper hand. You know, surprise is a is a is a military tactic in essence to get the upper hand. They come in and say, "I'm going to do this," and it's going to knock them all off, and they're all going to be, you know, reeling, and I'm going to be. Yeah, I'll be the center of attention. I'll be the center of attention. And instead, you come in there and say, "Ah, yes. Well, I am prepared now for 15 minutes of annoyance from you. You may begin." <laughs> But I only have seven minutes of material. Well, then I will bank the other seven minutes, and you may annoy me further later. <laughs> We're like, man, that's no fun. That's no fun. I'm gonna go find somebody else to annoy. Well, you go right ahead, and do that. I still have the 15 minutes right here whenever you're ready. <laughs> you know, I have allotted you so a, a certain. You prepared yourself to the point where you where you know you're so aware of what. You where your heart is, where your where your energy is, that you say, yeah, I'm going to be attacked in these ways, and I'm ready. I'm ready for that. You're not looking for a fight, but you're ready to deal with the provocation. Mm-hmm. What well, kind of? How do I say this? The awareness allows you to make. It's like a barrier, almost like the oil on a on a duck's back. The oil is the reason why all water rolls off. Mm-hmm. Well, you've you've got a barrier, and that oil is it. It doesn't cling to any of the stuff that's being thrown on it. Just mm-hmm. all the duck has to do is is uh, shake itself off, mm-hmm. and that's all you wind up doing. You realize that all you do, all you have to do, is just just flick those wings, man, and that's it. And you're dry. I I am untouched. And <laughs> untouched. And, and and you know, writ large, you know, the Thanksgiving dinner is sort of like the um the 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 small game, or it's the you know it's the game you have to go to, and that you're going to have to to endure, and you have to be prepared for that. But then there's the big game, the big you know everyday stress, especially this time of year. You know, people have. Uh, sad, you know, seasonal affect disorder. The days are short, they're dark, they're cold, they're rainy, like in New Jersey, it's raining every 17 seconds, or, <laughs> or, or, or it's snowing, or, and all these things, all this stress on top of, um, you know, this sort of, of death march to, to Christmas, uh, you know, it, it can just drive you up one wall and down the other if you're not prepared for it if you if you let each individual event surprise you and get a control on you get a get a reaction on you and then once you're reacting you're moving you're off balance and they've got you and they can they can guide you any way they want you to guide and they can drag you along any which way they want to go and it's like you just have to decide that you know my my soul is more valuable than that and yeah, I would like to have a, a more productive relationship with you guys, more positive. But you know where you're at; it's not really rolling in that direction. So I'm just gonna allow you the space to mature. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and 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 you know, it's very much like um, in the physical. An analog of this in the physical would be a martial art training. You know, what's the first thing that you learn that you learn in martial arts? You learn balance. You learn your center, and and your 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 center here is is your heart center. It's your heart chakra center. But it's the same sort of thing. If you are if you are balanced in your heart, you are immovable. You are unshakable. You become a pattern by which everything else around you can move, and 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 in essence. Move to the peace. Right. In in that back and forth training, martial art training, you understand that your center is truly center. You claim center and everything moves around you. Yep. So that you are never off center. And when you are dealing with an attack, the easiest thing to do is to turn the other person's center of gravity off get them off center mm-hmm. but you have you claim center right so 
that that is key you must claim center you must claim your heart as center mm-hmm. and then things begin to move around that balanced point and we have reached the center of the program and we are going to uh-huh. take a, a balanced break go back to the <laughs> studio and rotate around and come right back out the other side The Timeless Esoterica Radio Program with Dr. Bruce is broadcast on the fourth Monday of every month at 8 p.m. Pacific, 11 p.m. Eastern on ArtistFirst.com. We explore topics including the paranormal, alien life, mysteries, conspiracies, hidden history, oddities, and much more. Each show will feature a special guest with exciting and thought-provoking discussion. Always keep an open mind, an open heart, live forever, and remember Dr. Bruce believes in you. When tornadoes raked the South, it was ham radio that was on the air, saving lives. As communities lay in ruins, it was the hams who let their families know their loved ones were safe. When the power and cell phones went out, the hams were there, helping rescuers get the message through. Wherever catastrophes strike, amateur radio is ready. Amateur radio works when other communications don't. Contact the ARRL, the National Association for Amateur Radio, on the web at emergencyradio.org. That's emergencyradio.org. There is a Reaper is the story of five-year-old Christopher Aaron and his life-changing struggle with leukemia. Winner of both the Indie Bragg Medallion as well as the reader's favorite silver medal for memoir, There is a Reaper has more than 100 Amazon book reviews and a five-star rating. It has been described as life-changing, spiritual, a must-read. Just released on Audible and iTunes, this memoir is also available in paperback and on Amazon Kindle for only 99 cents. Get your copy of this life-changing memoir today. Taking God on Patrol is a first-person account of the world of law enforcement from the perspective of a Christian police officer in the fourth largest city in America. From speeding car chases to the crossing of the thin blue line, author Mark S. Carriner seeks to find God's biblical truth in a behind-the-scenes look at law enforcement. And check out Mark's newest book, The Tactical Heart. Both are available at Amazon.com. The Fat Man Gets Out of Bed is the latest book from Michael Lines, the award-winning author of There is a Reaper. Featuring 13 original stories, this wide-ranging collection has everything. Forbidden love, gods versus demigods, weird invading aliens, sexy seductive artificial intelligence, and unusual passion between the living and the dead. All set amidst fantastic worlds of pain and loss and boundless joy. From the sublime to the macabre to the bittersweet, The Fat Man Gets Out of Bed will leave you breathless with laughter, brimming with tears, trembling with suspense. Available now on Amazon.com, Google Play, iTunes, Kobo, and fine e-tailers everywhere. Hi, my name is Christina Garlick, and my new book, Nevada Rain, is now available. It's a sci-fi fantasy story for ages 14 and up. I hope you check it out, and of course, enjoy... Also, you're listening to the Artist First Radio Network that has a station for everyone. You are listening to the soul of the everyman on the Artist First Radio Network. You can always send your questions and comments in to DJ at ArtistFirst.com. Back to your hosts, Michael and Margaret Lines. Thank you very much, Z Man. That was relatively stress free. <laughs> and, and and we are we, we are welcome back to the second half of the Oasis of Calm during this rather stressful holiday period. Mm. Everyone take a deep breath and then let it out. I hate Santa, I hate Santa, I hate Santa, I hate Santa. <laughs> 
<laughs> you see that didn't, didn't that feel good no we don't hate santa santa is a lovely um wonderful saint saint nicholas of course and and he's i'm sure he, he and 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 everything that's actually behind the holidays uh, would be very annoyed at, at what what we in Madison Avenue, what we have allowed Madison Avenue to do to it. Uh, but in fact, um, you know, we have to deal. We have to go to war with the army we have, and the army we have is is the current American consumer culture, which is what it is. It's got it's all it's very wonderful, but it's got its warts and its lumps. And uh, you don't want to be the sausage that gets ground up in it every time they want you to do something there you got to put you prepare yourself we talked about it in the first half hour you prepare yourself you put yourself centered and you say i know they're going to try and hype up little johnny to buy the latest piece of plastic goo that costs three hundred dollars i know that's going to happen so i've got to get ahead of it i've got to be ready for that i've got to be ready when little johnny and little susie run into the bedroom and scream at the top of the lungs that they want the xyz project that costs costs a thousand bucks you know they're going to do it because that's what they do you know these demons are are not going to stop doing that thing your job is to provide that balanced center we mentioned it just before we went to the break like a martial artist, like like somebody who's been trained in the in the martial arts, your heart center is immovable if you decide that you're going to remain there. Yes, balanced and centered, and every movement that you do or every decision that you make means that your heart's state of balance is primary. And when it comes to your children as well, because mm. let's face it, if the kids are unhappy, nothing upsets your own heart more. Mm. Now, it doesn't mean that they're unhappy about, you know, wanting stuff. But what I mean is showing them what a true heart state actually is. And there's a wholeness, a teaching about wholeness of the heart and of being. It's not just wanting what you see. This is this is the whole um, purpose in parenting is allowing the children to see what a balanced adult looks like. Mm. We try really hard, <laughs> right? You know, and just it's a it is it is a, it's a daily struggle to provide that example mm-hmm. uh, because. It's it's very important. It's something which, of course, is done both overtly and um, unconsciously. You you overtly attempt to provide a good example to your children. You're, you're doing that as as one of the jobs of being their parent or their grandparent or their their caregiver. But then there's just the things you you, you don't well you do realize if you have had kids, but you may not realize if you haven't had them that children are observing you. 24/7 365 they are like the the stealth bombers of people they are they are they are patterning themselves and looking for themselves in you and what mm-hmm. to do constantly so so even when you're driving in the car and you just you know you you get cut off and you make um let's say a uh, creative gesture that gesture is imprinted. That reaction is imprinted. So when you react and you go off center and your heart is off the rails, uh, they're watching, they're patterning, they're, they're internalizing. They're going to be copying you. And so when, you know, 20 years later, when, when you say to your, to your little precious child who's now uh, a, 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 some, a pseudo-adult, why do you do that sort of stuff? Because you always did. Well, yeah, because they were watching and you were doing. And uh, no one knows you better than your children. Mm-hmm. You know, it's nature and nurture. They're both related to you. And they've been observing you like hawks. Uh, what you see, the one thing that always gets their attention, 100% attention, is if something unexpected happens to mommy or daddy, then it, it's amazing watching them because they, they open up wide and they look not only with their eyes but their ears and, and, and every sense that they've got 
what is mommy or daddy doing right at this moment when this thing has come in? Right. And they, they, and I wish I'd known more about that when I was a young parent because back in my head, I'm like, okay, I could just, I have to watch what I do. Okay. I, I understood this to a certain point. They never realized how wide open they are Mm. when they're young like that. It goes right to their heart. It goes right to their heart. So if if something happened and um, it was dangerous, you know, like when you're driving in the car and some car is cutting you off and it was like you had to do everything in your power not to be involved in an accident. Mm. Okay, your first reaction that rises up, they they see it and they and they go. It, it's amazing because they go dead silent. You ever? Mm. <laughs> they go absolutely silent. And if you glance at them, you realize everything's going in right now. Right. They are imprinting the the mood of the moment, the tension, the response, the expression on your face. Yes. The position of your body, the focus that you are are giving to the moment, it all goes in. It's it's more than a, a snapshot. It is a 3D hologram that's getting imprinted into their little base of their brains. That this is what we do when we're stressed. Mm. Okay. The genetically speaking, my genetic mother is is genetically <laughs> responding this way. This is how I guess I'm supposed to respond. Yes. And, and you can see the survival, um, mm-hmm. the, the value of that for survival situations. So for umpteen thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of years, when something bad happened, you know, a predator tried to attack, the reaction, the instantaneous reaction that the adult would give Right. Was, was to survive. So imprinting on that, because if you survive, I have to survive. If you figured out how to do it, I have to figure out how to do it. And if you, if, you know, learning, that learning moment is tied directly to an existential, to a survival, uh, uh, mm-hmm. you know, meme, a, a survival imprint. So yes, exactly that. When we are stressed, we ourselves are stressed, but our children also feel our stress immediately. They're, yeah. in a, they're in a position where they're tied to you at a visceral level. They haven't yet separated. And what's interesting is whether or not you have established a foundation where they understand that you are immovable. Your right. heart piece is immovable. You can always be counted on. Okay. If you go into fear, they immediately take that in and say, well, then it's a fear mode that I've got to respond in. Yes. And that is a very hard thing to try to teach. Well, to un- unteach, right. To, to, to get that fear response out of them once they've taken it in. It takes a longer time and a much more... Mm, in-depth consciousness i okay that's fear i shouldn't take that because it, it goes in deep it's it's almost impossible to unroot uh you know those those types of 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 stressor learnings um become part because they become sublingual uh sub thought right you know, they're at a they're at a heartbeat level and so it it, it is your reaction, your 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 visceral reaction to stress becomes their visceral reaction to stress. And to the extent that you can be that rock, and it's difficult because obviously, you know, real situations where you're really stressed, where, where you really have a, a possibility of injury or death, uh, are difficult for your own self to handle in a rock-like, calm manner. But you also have the opportunity. The, the, the fun part about, not fun, the, the, the amazing part about that reaction is it's not just the instantaneous moment. There's a period of time after it. It's called the refractory period. 
uh, when you have an emotional reaction during which you're still open, you're still available, and you can mold it. It's very difficult to mold the initial um, reaction because it happens before you're aware of it. It's and pre-verbal. Pre-verbal and pre-thought. You, you, so you, you're in a reaction before you're aware. The Dalai Lama and some of the other researchers in this, in this science, this science of reactive, reactive emotion, have talked about becoming aware that you are in reaction as soon as possible. They key, there's no one, perhaps maybe the Dalai, but no one who can become aware before the reaction begins. You know, you, you get the reaction. You're angry, you're fearful, you're stressed, you're whatever. And then, and then the, the, the tendency is to walk right off into whatever crazy um, post-reactive stress uh, problem that you're going to, you know, you're, you know, screaming, yelling, whatever. You have to stop yourself right there in the midst of the reaction and become aware, I am angry. I am fearful. And stop observe yourself be there now your children are right there with you they are watching mm -hmm. you and they see that down to the core they see your stress reaction and they see if you have that moment if you then marshal yourself and say okay I am not going to go off into the unconscious reaction and all the damage that that does and just stop and become aware yes there's still the period of reaction. You cannot get away from your brain chemistry. The reaction is there, fear, anger, whatever. But you, you can then say, oh, mommy or daddy was very afraid, but I knew that we were going to, and you can become the teacher because that refractory period, that attention span period is incredibly important to, to be able to not have that be their whole reaction from trigger to emotion, to, you know, gone, you know, off, off, off doing, doing the damage or doing the, uh, uh, you know, um, becoming as fear as the basic reaction to this particular stress. Uh, you, you have to get it at that point. So the, what's the key? Awareness. Awareness of your own emotions, of how, how intimately they're being observed and how much putting yourself into the state of prepared balanced heart energy will also be observed and internalized rather than crazy off to fear or crazy off to anger or crazy off to whatever reaction it is. Um, it's not easy. <laughs> it's not easy. You're fighting yourself in many ways and the pre-preparation is the key. Well, the decision has got to be there. You have must make the decision that you are not going to go into the well-worn grooves of your reaction. Yeah. And the well-worn grooves are evidenced before you, if you've watched your own parents and you've seen how they reacted to things, how fear can affect individuals and their expressions are varied according to, to the fear. Or rather, their fear reaction is... is has got its own patterns, mm. each and every one. So when you realize that that's there, that's, that's in your toolbox, you might have a stress reaction like your dad or like your mom, but because you are aware, you say, no, it doesn't do anything. Right? And, and that's really key, making the decision on whether or not you will embrace one or the other because you can do that. And how do you get out of those reactions? I know speaking for myself, especially when it has to do with a life or death situation over a child that you love, you sacrifice all of it. You realize that in your humanness, I'm not going to do that because those reactions that were patterned for me will harm him even more. And mm. I might miss the possible cure for his, his, his hurt. Well, his death sentence. Well, in our case, but in, in broad, 
the the damage that is the 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 reactions that you were handed that you observed and internalized you have the opportunity with awareness to change them and then therefore affect uh, your children and those around you what I understood was his life is more important than whether or not I'm comfortable or I'm in a reaction exactly so it was a lot of all right I don't know what the heck I'm doing but I will not burden my child with this reaction because the one thing I did understand is that the way I reacted in that moment is going to be the foundation from which he's going to respond to what's happening to himself and I did not want to color his experience because it's his life it's not about me it's about him so understanding that he needs to have a clear broad foundation I refused to go into the refused right. to go into those reactions because what that that's not going to help him one little bit and I don't want him to take care of my reaction. Right. Because when you don't take care of your own reaction, you put the burden on someone else. Exactly. To, to deal with you. Exactly. So is, so is that what you want? Be really clear on what you choose. Because that, this, what we're talking about, is the foundation of karma. Hmm. That action that you so choose will re-emerge further down the line and is that what you want to come from your child or the one you love and exactly and these are these these existential reactions and training in that environment also can be brought forward into you know, less existential you know less life or death type reactions just the reactions of of everyday stress or holiday stress or um you know dealing with uh large groups of people that are that you happen to be related to you know these types of of stressors are less but yet the same process your children are observing how you treat aunt mildred when aunt mildred wants to you know corner you and talk to you about her dentures well you know that stressor is a much less obviously no one's dying here uh, but but the stressor of having somebody try to claim you and push you off center and, and kind of make you dance to their to their jig and how you deal with that is being observed uh, you have your reaction you have the reaction which is in them so our our awareness is key in all these situations the awareness that you didn't want to pass on your reaction to someone who is already dealing with it with an existential threat on their life and yet was immature we have to be aware of the fact that we're not acting in a vacuum that we are being patterned on and we and others who aren't our children are reacting to how we react so awareness says, I'm not going to be the one who takes this off the rails. When my heart gets pushed off the rails, I push everyone else's heart off the rails. And then you end up with a situation where everyone in the room is screaming at each other and won't talk to each other for a week afterwards. And yeah, maybe you get over it and so on. But that, you never actually get over those things. They, be, they leave emotional tracks, scars. Uh, you said it before, they become well-worn pathways that the next time it's even easier to do the exact same thing. It becomes a little river in your mind. And I think uh, one of the, the neurologists was saying that these become actual detectable pathways in the brain. They're mm -hmm. like little, little trees. And that every time you react that way, the same set of little trees gets lit up and it becomes a little bit stronger. Mm -hmm. A little bit stronger. The mind is... Is, is, is a very plastic organ. It becomes malleable. It learns and it changes all the time. So the way you use that reaction is also how your mind is channeling 
which trees are getting lit up and you know the tree that you light up is the tree that's easier to light up the next time mm -hmm. and you you can actually choose to transform those trees into a more positive patterning exactly so but this is what i mean you you must make an internal decision and refuse to take the lower road the lesser path or the lesser light those trees light up but there are different degrees of light that go on through the brain mm -hmm. and the brighter or the more uh, the brighter of the tree it's more creative the patterning happens for the human mind just it gives more of a more tool to be able to find solutions because that is what we do down here mm. you are able to be conscious and aware of what's going on and with that ability to open your mind you also almost open up the different pathways in your head to find solutions it's very very true it, it, you know the more uh, uh, when you have these narrow well-worn channels are also extremely uh, um, they ignore all the power of the brain and the ability for finding solutions or finding different ways to do things and they just make it very much like an animal reaction when when somebody's in one of these reactions it's, an, it's almost an animal reaction it's stimulus response right I, I push button a and and flame B shoots out the side <laughs> You know, Pavlovian, Pavlovian, and mm -hmm. your brain, if it's if it's to be used to its full effect, has to involve all portions of it. The mm -hmm. way you the way your children are observing is is they see, you know, stimulus, and and fire shoots out your mouth. Well, that's how that's how you know. Every that time, must be. Every, that must be. That must be how you do it. Mm -hmm. You know, somebody somebody comes by and cuts you off, and you. You, you raise that middle finger and you scream at them and you beep your horn and you scream in obscenities and that's, that's the way to do it, man. And then next time they're in the little tiny tight car and, and Johnny, somebody cuts them off, <laughs> oh they'll my. do all those same things. <laughs> and, like, and you're like, if, if the worst thing to do at that point is say, oh, isn't that cute? No, no, it's not cute because they'll be doing it when they're 25 uh, and, and maybe getting into an accident or, or into a, uh, they're, you know, teaching their own children this kind of terrible behavior. Um, so, to bring us back to our to our center a little bit on the soul of every man is, you know, the holidays and this time of year are rife with those types of stressors. There's a lot of well-worn grooves. <laughs> a lot of well-worn grooves, and there's a lot of children, not just yours, and a lot of people observing how you react and and being influenced by your reaction so awareness you know cultivate your awareness cultivate your heart center be actively balanced be actively ahead of the situation say you know i know aunt mildred's going to talk about her dentures i'm prepared well, you know you're doing at this point what you're talking about is all the mental preparation this is the mental uh approach to it but you really need to be grounded again and I stress it again and again you must be grounded in the moment of now yep. Just be present in this moment of space and time don't sit in the mental spin of well I know this is going to happen or I know that's going to happen you just make space for it you don't re uh, don't, play don't, don't call it in don't replay what has happened before, okay? That's prepping to go down the well-worn groove. Mm. You come to the point of, well, okay, you understand that this can happen. You make the space, but you've already decided that you will be calm in the present moment, grounded, and immovable. So now we have to move along. And so this has been the soul of every man. And I'm Margaret. And I'm Michael, and don't be stressed. <laughs>